the uh, genius entrepreneur and billionaire Elon Musk is now in the Guinness Book of Records as the man who has lost the biggest personal fortune in history. Can I get a hell yeah! Eight months earlier. Elon, you are reported by Forbes and everyone else as, as now, you know, the world's richest person. That's not a sovereign. <laughs> Oddly, not after losing 200 odd billion dollars, he ain't. So, so 300 billion dollars, how insane is that? Yeah. And personally, I'm going to love the follow up TED interview where they ask him, what was it like to lose 200 billion dollars? I mean, does that, how, how, do you, how do you handle that psychologically? Very, there aren't many people in the world who have to even think about that. But it is fun to revisit Elon Musk before he lost. $200 billion, which is only like eight months earlier. You know, every good hour uh, or even minute of thinking about uh, Tesla and, and SpaceX has such a big effect on the company. Oh, yes, please do tell me how you managed to lead your company to lose something like what trillion dollars of market cap over just over a year. That I, I really try to work as, as, as much as possible uh, you know, to, to the edge of sanity, basically. Yeah, maybe Musk should just sit this one out and we'll get by with the magic eight ball for a bit. You know, t Tesla's getting to the point where, probably we'll get to the point later this year, where every good, every high quality minute of thinking um, uh, is a million dollars to, to uh, impact on, on Tesla. You'll be happy to know Elon Musk exceeded this for every minute he was alive using his uh, brilliance to lead Tesla. Tesla's been losing about two and a half million dollars per minute. Uh, which is insane. Um, I mean, there, there are many instances where uh, a half hour meeting, the or I was able to improve the financial outcome of the company um, by a hundred million dollars in a half hour meeting. Wow. Point one of a billion dollars in a half hour meeting. That's, that's so impressive. What about the um, 1,000 billion dollars Changing the company's outlook over merely the course of a year under your leadership. Um, SpaceX, Tesla, Neuralink, and Boring Company are philanthropy. If you say philanthropy is love of humanity, um, they are philanthropy. Or, or maybe more accurately, they are record-breaking money-losing machines. Which is maybe the reason why. I believe Tesla was the most shorted stock in the history of stock markets. Yeah. This is saying something. So, you know, this was affecting our ability to hire people. It was affecting our ability to sell cars. Well, most of them have paid the price. Yes. How they, where are they now? Well, um, about uh, $15 billion richer. Thank you, Elon. <laughs> um, uh, so in summary, the people who shorted Tesla, the people who thought it was overvalued are um, like... Uh, We're in the money. while people who went all in when Tesla was at its peak have lost over 70% of their money. Yes. How the, where are they now? <laughs> um, in fact, at its peak, Elon Musk was losing his uh, net worth at the rate of about a million dollars per minute. That's his personal net worth was dropping that quickly because most of Elon Musk's uh, wealth is Tesla stock. To put that into perspective, the M134 machine gun, the fastest firing machine gun in service, fires about 5,000 rounds per minute. Now, if you modify those to fire $100 bills, you would need two of those firing flat out to even attempt to lose wealth as fast as Elon Musk. I mean, I'm feeling, I guess, relatively optimistic about the future these days. And whilst those are indeed gratifying numbers to look at for someone who's been calling Musk out as a bullshit arsist for the best part of a decade now, the reality is Musk is still one of the biggest winners here, having personally himself dumped about $40 billion of a monopoly money Tesla shares and cashing them in for real world money. Something he promised the stockholders he would never do. The pump and dump scheme is simple and illegal. 
The principle is the same as the Wolf of Wall Street. ...information on penny stocks that had huge upside potential with very little downside risk. Does that ring a bell? It is perhaps the best thing I've seen in the last six months. If you... Name of the company, Aerotine International. It is a cutting-edge, high-tech firm out of the Midwest awaiting imminent patent approval. You know, claiming you've got something that's gonna change the world, that's gonna be worth trillions. Patent approval on a next generation of radar detectors that have both huge military and civilian applications. Now, by the way, John, our analysts indicate it could go a heck of a lot higher than that. Make some utterly bogus predictions that, as we'll see later, are actually very comparable to some of Elon Musk's. Your profit on a mere $6,000 investment would be upwards of $60,000. Jesus, that's my mortgage, man. Exactly, you could pay off your mortgage. And then basically tell people, it's a solved problem. We know how to do this. And in the case of Aerotine, based on every technical factor out there, John, we are looking at a grand slam home run. And for who do you trust? Hubba, hubba, hubba. Money, money, money. Who do you trust? Me? I'm giving away free money. And of course, remember to thank your fans for how much they believe in your vision. Hey, John, thank you for your vote of confidence, and welcome to the Investor Center. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. Bye-bye. At 12, he built a video game he called Blastar, which started his lifelong love of inventing things that already exist. Like most of Musk's stuff, it's just a new spin on a very old idea. The other guys looked at me like I just discovered fire. So maybe put $17 million into a pedestrian car make. Sure, it's a kind of a legit business, but you can't make any real money like that. Now you've got to lie your ass off, telling people how it's going to change everything. And eventually, you'll get your converts. And the value of the company starts to reflect the utterly delusional promises rather than reality. Then when the stocks are sky high, start selling your stock. You don't have to sell all of it, of course, but hey, if you can convince people it's worth 10 times what it's actually worth, you only have to sell 10% of your stock to make a profit. Musk did a little better than this. So let's just put that in an infographic, shall we? Elon Musk put about $70 million into Tesla and has sold off $40 billion of Tesla stock. Now, sure, uh, Tesla did actually become a real car company that made about 1% to 2% of the cars in America. But at its peak, it was worth more than all of the other car makers combined. Which is, of course, when Musk started selling off his stock. Conveniently forgetting what he told his stockholders, that just as his money was the first in, it would be the last out. Something that has apparently rattled even committed Tesla fans. Absolutely infatuated with every aspect of it. So as soon as I got home, I thought to myself, if I enjoy the car this much, chances are everyone else will too. So I made an investment back when the stock was trading at now what would be $17 a share. I never really thought much of it, and I just thought it would be cool that if the price of the stock did well, maybe that would be enough to pay for the sales tax on the cars. In November of 2021, near the peak of the market, Elon Musk posted a poll on Twitter asking his followers if he should pay his fair share in taxes by selling 10% of his Tesla holdings. Personally, I felt like this was his way of being able to cash out of the stock during a time where it was trading at unrealistic expectations. And I have a feeling he knew this and he used the audience to his advantage to pay taxes. In total, throughout the last year, he sold about $40 billion in value from the stock. While investors argue that he's taking money from Tesla to plug the losses of Twitter, which he had no reason buying in the first place. Although this is really only the tip of the iceberg, and the rest is something that not a lot of people are talking about. Actually, some of us have been talking about that stuff for some time now. But Tesla, like any other company in a pump and dump, is actually a legit company. Its valuation is just off the charts crazy. But oddly, it losing some 70% of its value still doesn't put it on a realistic valuation. But what seems to have been the origin of the latest crash, other than Musk's crazy antics on Twitter, taking one random example from the non-stop drama show that is Elon Musk running Twitter of, say, I don't know, oh yeah, uh, he said that he was going to ban anyone who linked to other sites, only to revoke the policy a day or so later. Yeah, the real-life Tony Stark, who's totally going to land someone on Mars by 2024. You, you've slightly put back 
the expected date to put uh, the first human on Mars till 2029, I, I want to say. Yeah. But anyway, like I was saying, it looks like the latest reason for the crash in the uh, Tesla stock price is it looks like the underlying car company has basically saturated demand, meaning there's no plausible route for growth of Tesla as a car company. Further fueling concerns are customer wait times for Tesla cars, which dropped sharply over 2022. Some investors see this as a sign demand is already softening. But if Tesla produced more cars at this point, you simply drive down the price which is why Tesla was offering in the last months of 2022 a $7,500 discount for cars purchased that year. And similar discounts in China leading to riots for people who had just paid full price. And those panicky price reductions have continued into 2023, with prices being reduced by $10,000 plus in some cases, leading to some understandably hurt feelings from um, Tesla fans. Like when you realize that had you ordered the car one week later, you would have saved $10,000. Yeah, France as well. It's it's really uh, looking, you know, more or less like Europe wide. So and to your point, Matt, th these are not just little trims. These are big, big reductions. We're talking about, you know, 20% for the Model Y, which is their, their top model. Yeah. Don't think making more cars when you can't sell the ones that you're currently making sounds like a very good business plan. But like I was saying, even having lost 70% of its market cap, Tesla is still probably massively overvalued. Give or take, the entire US auto industry, minus Tesla, is worth just under a trillion dollars. In fact, it turns out that Tesla's depreciation is currently about the same size as all the other car manufacturers combined. That's how much Tesla's market cap has depreciated. So if you value Tesla like a regular car company, it makes about 1% to 2% of the cars in America, probably going to be valued somewhere around $10, $20 billion, that sort of thing. So the stock that Elon Musk sold in Tesla was likely more than the entire actual value of the company. So a breakdown like this, when Musk founded the company, he put about $70 million in for something like 15% of the company. Let's call it 10 to make our numbers easier. Tesla is currently worth something like 10 to 20 billion dollars if you value it as a car company. So let's call it 20 and say Elon Musk's realistic share of that is about 2 billion dollars, which you could say is actually pretty good. That's like a 10 times return on investment over something like 10 years. Then you get on to the crux of it, which is when Elon Musk has now sold a fraction of those shares for 40 billion dollars. And just so we're clear, this was Elon Musk cashing out of his own company. The one who he tells everyone else is vital for the future of mankind to accelerate the transfer to electrical energy. And the fact that he's cashing out should tell you everything you need to know. We haven't seen a reason yet that he's sold over $7 billion, stock, $7 billion worth of stock over the last couple of weeks and months. So... You know, that's on top of the $33 billion that he had done before. Now, that money didn't just appear out of nowhere. Other people put money into Tesla based on Elon Musk's promises. And I should stress, this is something that Elizabeth Holmes didn't do. And she stressed that she didn't do it. Because it would show that the promises that you were making to her overvalue your company were being done for financial gain. But a simple reading of the situation is that's exactly what Elon Musk has done here. So why isn't Elon Musk in jail yet? The amount of ethically questionable wealth transfer here and the destruction of wealth we're looking at is truly eye-watering. Elizabeth Holmes lied to investors. And when those lies became apparent, the value of the company went from about $10 billion to zero. And she got prosecuted and sentenced to 10 years in jail for that. And her light sentence was in part due to she hadn't sold stock when it was massively overvalued based on her false promises. Trevor Milton likewise pumped up Nikola stock on fictitious revolutionary truck promises to the point where Nikola became the most valuable trucking company in America, even though they'd never actually made a truck. And then, of course, he sold loads of that stock, like merely a fraction of a billion, and the company lost billions in value. And because Milton took the money out, 
when he knew that the company couldn't deliver on these promises, he's now been convicted of fraud. What Elon Musk has done is about a hundred times worse than both of these companies put together. Over 2022, Tesla's market cap decreased, uh, depreciated at the rate of about a Theranos a week. In the game of cashing out as most of you can from your overvalued company, Elon Musk literally sold more than a hundred times more of his overvalued company than Trevor Milton and Elizabeth Holmes combined. And in terms of how much their companies lost, Musk is about 40 times worse than Theranos and Nikola combined. All of this was fueled by years of Elon Musk's utterly too good to be true promises. You know, like the robo taxi where there'll be a, a million of them on the road guaranteed by 2020. If you fast forward a year, just a little maybe a year, maybe a year and three months, uh, at, but next year for sure, we will have over a million robo taxis on the road. Each one costing some 30, 40 odd thousand dollars, going down to $25,000 eventually. So the current cost of Model 3 robo-taxi is um, less than $38,000. We expect that number to improve over time. Patent approval on the next generation of radar detectors that have both huge military and civilian applications now. Two years from now, we, 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 we make a car that has no steering wheels or pedals. And if we need to accelerate that time, we can always just delete parts, easy. By the way, John, our analysts indicate it could go a heck of a lot higher than that. Yeah, probably, say long term, three years, rubber taxis with, with eliminated parts, it maybe it ends up being $25,000 or less. And they would return some $30,000 per year for 10 years. You say, what would be the probable gross profit from a single rubber taxi? Um, we think probably something on the order of $30,000 per year returning $300,000 on a mere $30,000 investment. So in nominal dollars, that would be, you know, a little over $300,000 over the course of 11 years. It might be higher. I think these consumptions are actually relatively conservative. What? Those are almost exactly Wolf of Wall Street con man type numbers. Your profit on a mere $6,000 investment would be upwards of $60,000. Exactly, you could pay off your mortgage. I mean, the, the fundamental, really fundamental message that consumers should be taking um, today is that it's financially insane to buy anything other than a Tesla. Right now, John, the stock trades over the counter at 10 cents a share. And by the way, John, our analysts indicate it could go a heck of a lot higher than that. They will be, uh, it'll be like owning a horse in three years. I mean. Fine if you want to own a horse, but you should go into it with that expectation. Needless to say, none of this happened. Teslas didn't magically turn into money printers for their owners, and people who didn't buy Teslas didn't end up owning a horse, as we are here now three years later. In short, what Musk was promising was 100% pure, unadulterated aerotype. Those are numbers that make the most stupid Ponzi schemes seem plausible. I mean, in a normal inflation situation, 5% return on investment per year is pretty good. If you believed Musk's magical robo-taxis delivering 100% risk-free return on investment per year, it would have instantly made all other forms of investment redundant. Now, if you're thinking this doesn't rise to the level of Elizabeth Holmes-style fraud, let this sink in. Andrew Carpathy joined Tesla as head of their AI autopilot in 2017, and described its state at that time like this. For example, at least what I've seen in uh, roughly five years at Tesla, when I joined, it barely kept lane <laughs> on the highway. I think going up from Palo Alto to SF was like three or four interventions. Anytime the road would do anything geometrically or turn too much, it would just like not work. In that exact same year, Elon Musk was claiming already that it was going to be able to drive across America without anyone touching the steering wheel. Yeah, essentially November or December of this year, we should be able to go from, yeah, all the way from a parking lot in California to a parking lot in New York no controls touched at any point 
during the entire journey. And <laughs> amazing. That's when you know you're dealing with a world-class con man, when he will say with absolute certainty a absolutely ludicrous claim that he absolutely knows is not true, and the audience fall for it hook, line, and sinker. And, <laughs> and at that point, Musk had already been claiming for over a year that it was 10 times safer than a human driver. Like a Model S and Model X at this point uh, can drive autonomously with greater safety than a person right now. Yeah. Look me in the eye and tell me this doesn't stack up to Elizabeth Holmes or Trevor Milton style fraud. We've made it possible to run comprehensive laboratory tests from a tiny sample or a few drops of blood. We'll have a chain on the seats to prevent people from coming in just for the safety. I don't want someone to end up doing something and driving this truck off the stage. But this thing fully functions and works, which is really incredible. Meanwhile, people who were firm Tesla fans all the way back in 2016 are eh, now kind of like this. Take a look at this. In 2019, he said it would be available in 2020. In 2020, he increased the price and said it would be available in 2021. He also said the feature is worth $100,000. Then again, in 2021, he said that level five self-driving requiring no human intervention would be available by the end of 2021. But a few months later, he claimed he never said that. And this is where people like me come in kind of useful. Well, I mean, I don't know whether he actually said it in 2021 or not, but I do know that he said it in 2019. Um, just so we understand the definitions, when you refer to uh, feature complete self-driving, it sounds like you're talking level five, no geofence. Is that what's expected by the end of the year? Just so we're yes. all on the same thing. Then again, in 2022, he said it would be available by the end of the year. And now that it's at the end of the year, we're looking back to Elon Musk to tell us when we could next expect it to be delivered. To put it another way, some people argue that buying full self-driving is really no different than giving Tesla an interest-free loan for an indefinite period of time, which would constitute false advertising. Now, as someone who's bought full self-driving for the purposes of testing it out on a YouTube video a few years ago, even though it's fantastic on the highway, it's really, really glitchy in person. Anyone who's used it will tell you that it randomly just breaks out of nowhere, sometimes it won't identify an object until it gets really, really close, and some research suggests that their driver disengagement rate was significantly worse than the competition. It also comes with the release note saying that you have to keep your hands on the steering wheel and ready to take over at a moment's notice. Additionally adding that while these features are designed to become more capable over time, currently enabled features do not make the vehicle autonomous. Uh, which is why they call it autopilot. Yeah, that doesn't make a lick of sense. And you can see why people are taking them to court over false advertising, with many describing full self-driving as mentally exhausting. As you're constantly hovering over the steering wheel as 99% of the time, the car behaves fine. Then randomly, for no apparent reason, the car might try to kill you. Yeah, now I wonder why Musk was selling billions of stock from his company. But he did reassure Tesla investors that he was done selling stock, which is rapidly becoming the new Tesla full self-driving will be ready next year promise. And that he originally said he would never sell the stock. Then after selling billions of stock in 2022, he promised he'd finished selling stock then, only to sell more stock later in 2022, only to promise again that no, he'd definitely, definitely finished selling stock now. And that was after he'd said under oath that he would never lie to investors. What, the man who held up completely fake solar roof tiles and told them they were installed on all the houses around him might not be completely truthful? Say it ain't so. I've got to admit, I do find it a little gratifying. You know, it's some guilty vicarious pleasure to see the headlines of Musk losing the most amount of money in history. I could spend quite a lot of time just... Just basking in that, but the reality is that money never existed. If you valued this video at a billion dollars, then all of a sudden don't value it as that. I never really became a billionaire and never really lost it. But if I went around telling people that this video is worth a billion dollars and sold 10% of it for a hundred million dollars, then that wealth was gained fraudulently. But rich people don't go to jail, do they? Well, sometimes they do. Sometimes they do.
And that's today's video. Liking and subscribing is always a good way to support and to make sure you don't miss out on more great content like this. And as ever, if you really like the work of this channel and want to support it directly, you can do it through Patreon. Thanks for watching.